Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. So I thought it would be fun to kind of do a yearly wrap up of all of the shows and movies that I've watched in 2022. As a bit of context, I am not the biggest watcher of movies and television. Not only do I not have the time, but I just don't have the concentration. It's very hard for me to sit down and actually watch things. My husband and I do have this really interesting system. We have a cup full of popsicle sticks of all of the shows that we want to watch together. And so every single time we are ready to watch a new season of another show, we will draw from those popsicle sticks to see what we are watching next. And so the hour we spend while we're eating dinner watching a show is for the most part, all of the TV watching that I get in during the year. There are some shows that I watch on my own when they are out and when I have the availability to do so. But aside from that, what I'm mostly watching on my own are true crime documentaries. And I have watched a ton of them in 2022 and also a few other things scattered here and there. With all that being said, it is currently only December 11th. So we have about three weeks left in the year. So I will definitely be finishing some other things throughout the year, primarily the Christmas movies that Robert and I will continue to watch until Christmas and then afterwards we probably won't start another season of a show until January 1st so for the most part what I will be watching the remainder of the year are Christmas movies I do have a few things in progress that I will talk to you about as well that I likely will be finishing before the end of the year but aside from that I really don't anticipate finishing anything else so without further ado let's get into it there is no particular order to how I'm talking about these things I'm just going to talk to you about them in the order that I wrote them down so the very first show that Robert and I watched in 2022 was season six of Castle Castle was a television show that started in Nathan Fillion. He was a very successful writer in this show and as inspiration for his next series of crime books he decided to basically shadow along with the NYPD and going along with them as they solved cases and crimes. And of course it's also about his romance with Detective Kate Beckett and their relationship kind of develops over several seasons. We really enjoy this show. We find it to be a lot of fun. There are definitely also a lot of serious moments. I love Nathan Fillion in general so Castle is just a really overall good time. Is it realistic? No. But is it still entertaining? Yes. So we have watched season six. We haven't watched anything else of Castle this year. We also finished season four of The 100 and The 100 has definitely become a guilty pleasure show for me. It's never something that was on my radar until recently and I decided to go ahead and watch it with Robert. He had already seen the first several seasons before we started to watch it together from the very beginning and I find this to be a very highly stressful show. Like every single season, every episode, I'm like on the edge of my seat, very concerned about what's going to happen next. The 100 is a science fiction show that is set in the future. Basically the world has been irradiated and is not safe for humans and so the characters in this show have been living up in like a space station but at the start of the show the space station can no longer sustain all the lives on board and so they decide to send 100 juvenile delinquents basically down to earth to see if it is inhabitable and you're following them as they're meeting the people that are actually still down there on earth what kind of goes along with trying to recultivate earth once it's been destroyed by radioactivity basically and like I said I really enjoy this I find this to be very fast-paced action-packed very very intense and I'm kind of glad that we haven't watched another season of it all year because it's just like every single day I'm just nervous about what's going to happen in an episode. I think we have two or three seasons left to finish the show and I'm looking forward to it really. Speaking of high intensity anxiety inducing shows, we also watched season seven of Game of Thrones. Yes, I have not finished that series. We still have one season left. I know a lot of people hated season eight. I've heard a lot of bad things about it. I really don't have any expectations to be honest with you. I'm just gonna go in and enjoy the ride of it. I know that it's a shorter season with maybe some longer episodes. So I'm hoping that we can possibly binge it when it comes around again in our popsicle stick system because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to handle just watching one episode every night. It's just too stressful for me. We did also watch The Walking Dead season six and season six of The Walking Dead is the highest that I've ever gotten. I used to watch The Walking Dead as it was released on Netflix every single year and then it got to season six and I just stopped for whatever reason and then Robert and I decided to start watching it together and he had never seen it before so we started from the very beginning and we managed to get through season six this year which was the stopping point for me and so everything going forward is going to be new. The Walking Dead I just really love the show. I think that the special effects of it are great. If you're not familiar The Walking Dead is basically a zombie zombie apocalypse type show where the world has been overtaken by zombies and it's about this group of people just trying to survive and I really enjoyed it so far. I know that there are some seasons that are better than others but you know it's continued to go on and I think it's ending after season 11 or 12. I'm not really sure but it is currently in its final season right now. Definitely looking forward to continuing with it. 
We also finished Supernatural season five. So Supernatural is a show that I've definitely been watching since it first premiered. I think it was in 2005, but I have never gotten past a certain point. So I stopped watching it. I think it was after season seven or eight. And then when I was ready to go ahead and continue, I made the decision that I needed to start from the beginning before I continued. So I watched all of seasons one through eight again and then I got through season 10 and then I stopped again and Robert and I decided to watch it together so again we're starting from the beginning so we did watch season five and a little bit later on in the year we watched season six so I'll go ahead and talk about that now so now we're going to be going into season seven the next time it comes around we also finished seasons five and six of The Blacklist The Blacklist is another show that I really enjoy it is very fast paced. There's a lot of action. There's a lot going on. The Blacklist follows our main character Elizabeth Keene and in the very first episode of the show she is a newly minted FBI agent and on that same day the FBI's most wanted fugitive Raymond Reddington goes into the FBI and he says I'm going to turn myself in and I'm going to help you catch some of the most notorious criminals out there but only if you let me work with Elizabeth Keene. And so every single season and episode basically you're following him as they are going after a specific blacklister. There's almost always a specific reason why Raymond Reddington wants them to go after this blacklister it usually helps him in his own purposes but a larger part of the story is Raymond Reddington's connection to Elizabeth Keene why he only wanted to work with her there are definitely a lot of secrets revealed it gets kind of complicated throughout the seasons but I have enjoyed every single season I don't think that there has been one season that I haven't enjoyed and I really like watching the mystery of Raymond and Elizabeth's relationship unwind and all of the secrets that are revealed so this is another show that I highly recommend if that sounds at all interesting to you also, I believe The Walking Dead, Supernatural, and The Blacklist are all still currently on Netflix. Game of Thrones obviously is going to be on HBO Max. If you don't have HBO Max, you might have to watch them on DVDs. Castle, I've always had to watch on DVD. I've never been able to find it streaming somewhere. I don't know if that has changed recently, but I primarily watch the DVDs of that. And The 100 is also on Netflix. Sorry, I have been neglecting to tell you where I watched these shows. And then of course, also on Netflix was Stranger Things Season 4, Parts 1 and 2. Absolutely fantastic Season 4 was definitely one of the best in my opinion. I think season three is still my favorite just because I really love the whole plot line with Billy. That final episode still cuts at my heartstrings. Season four was really really good. I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of like the plot line they had with Mike and Will and all of that. That was a little bit weird and I didn't like that they were so disconnected from everything else but you know overall I'm still very very much in love with the show. It's probably one of the best shows that I've ever seen in recent memory and I'm nervous for it to continue. I think season five comes out in 2024 so we have quite to wait. I'm sure that season five is going to be fantastic. I'm going to be very sad to say goodbye to this world and these characters, but I like that they know when to stop it before it kind of gets old, you know? We also finished The Rookie season two, which is another show that stars Nathan Fillion. I believe we watched this one on Hulu. In The Rookie, Nathan Fillion is the rookie. He is older. He is in his 40s and he just recently decided to do this big huge career change and now you're following him as he is entering the LAPD and all of that goes along with it. Now obviously the show is not going to be 100% realistic but I feel like it does a really good job of trying to be as realistic as possible to what it could be like being on the LAPD and I really appreciated that. So so far I feel like this show does a great job of depicting that. It's obviously high drama and Nathan Fillion does an amazing job. We also finished The Last Man Standing season Three, Last Man Standing is a comedy featuring Tim Allen. Some people say that it's home improvement, but with girls. <laughs> there are definitely a lot of similarities between this show and Home Improvement. In The Last Man Standing, he has three daughters instead of sons. Instead of being like on a home improvement show, he actually owns Outdoor Man, which is kind of like a big Bass Pro Shops type of thing. So there is a lot of similarities. I find like the humor in Last Man Standing is definitely a lot more politically incorrect, which I appreciate. And overall, it is just a good time. We really enjoy that show. Getting into some of the true crime documentaries, I finished Crime Scene at Times Square which was on Netflix and this is a documentary I think it was three episodes long that really details Times Square and what it used to be known for and the seedy nature of it and the crimes that happened there. I really like this crime scene series. They did a crime scene series on that notorious hotel in LA where Elizabeth Lamb I think her name was. Oh gosh why can't I remember the name of that hotel? It's so infamous but they did a series on that and it was really well done and so when they came out with Times Square I jumped on the chance to watch it. These are really great and they just kind of highlight a specific place and all of the crimes that have kind of taken place there which is interesting. Also on Netflix was Dig Deeper The Disappearance of Bridget Meyer. That was okay that was just a standard documentary following the disappearance of a missing woman. 
I watched Helter Skelter, an American myth on epics, I think it was. And that is a documentary, obviously, following the Manson family. I buddy read Helter Skelter with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand, and it was phenomenal. And so kind of after that, I was really interested in diving a little bit more into the Manson family. And this documentary series was phenomenal. It does a really great job of detailing Manson and his cult and the crimes really goes deeply into it. And I highly recommend if you were interested. Another life changing documentary is Cowspiracy. I am late to the game on that one. I know that it took the world by storm a couple of years ago, but that is really a documentary all about the very harmful nature of the commercial animal agriculture industry. Not only the cruelty that goes on to the animals involved, but the environmental damage that it inflicts. A lot of people don't understand how much damage animal agriculture actually does and how much it's contributing to like deforestation and global warming and things of that nature. It is a very eye-opening documentary series. I had already made the decision to go vegan prior to watching Cowspiracy, but it really helped cement the decision. And so I really feel like Cowspiracy, even if you don't necessarily have the same values as me, I feel like it's very, very eye-opening and that you can learn a lot just by watching it. I will admit it was hard to watch it sometimes just because of the animal cruelty that is depicted in there. Thankfully, it wasn't a lot. It was very much more informative and factually based, but I really don't think that you can like shy away from this stuff. So I do recommend Cowspiracy as like a very eye-opening documentary experience. On HBO, I watched Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. That was a documentary that covered the case of Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos, which I'm sure all of you have heard of before because it is quite an interesting case. She was recently just put on trial and sentenced to prison for her role and everything that happened. Highly recommend this documentary. The documentary, I believe, was based on the book by John Carreyrou, The True Crime Novel. So either one, whether you watch the documentary or read the book, it is very, very interesting. Since I'm talking about that documentary, I will also talk about The Dropout on Hulu, which is a fictionalized version of the story starring Amanda Seyfried. She did a fantastic job. It was very well done. And so I highly recommend if you are more interested in the dramatized version of it, that was very, very good. Like I said, that is on Hulu. Another Netflix documentary that was really interesting was The Tinder Swindler. It was about a man on Tinder who basically conned women into sending him money. He would tell these very elaborate lies in order to get these women to send him money. And so this Netflix series was all about some of the women that this happened to and them working together to catch this guy. It was very interesting interesting and eye-opening, especially if you use Tinder or these social media apps, like what to be on the lookout for and things of that nature. Also on Hulu was a documentary called City of Angels, City of Death. This was a documentary following a lot of the serial killers that were in the LA area. I think it was during the 70s because that area had a lot of them during that time. And so this was several episodes long covering some of the detectives that worked these big cases and all of them that were happening like at the same time. It was really interesting. The 70s was a huge time for serial killers for some odd reason. And this focused primarily like on the LA region. On Hulu, I watched a documentary called Wild Crime. I believe this might eventually become a series that follows different crimes, but basically they're crimes set in national parks. And so the very first season of Wild Crime followed a very specific crime. And then I think that they might be releasing more in the future set at possibly other national parks and other crimes. I don't know that for sure, but I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought they did a really great job. And it's just a different kind of world when you're dealing with national parks, because there's also other like investigative forces involved in that as well. It was really, really interesting. Also on Hulu, I watched A Wilderness of Error. That's based on a book called A Wilderness of Error by Errol Morris, and it follows the trial and the case of Jeffrey McDonald, who was accused of basically killing his entire family. And if I remember this correctly, the details are fuzzy, but the person who wrote the book was very much convinced of this guy's innocence. And so he wrote the book about it. And now he's doing a documentary series, kind of tossing back and forth the fact that he could maybe not be innocent. So it was very, very interesting to have the writer in there as well, kind of going over the book and his use of the crime and how he's kind of like taking a step back and admitting that there could be some guilt with this guy. Kind of along the same lines as the Tinder swindler was the Puppet Master, which is also on Netflix. That is also about a con man who over two decades would conceal his identity in order to steal money from people. Definitely, it's very, very scary to think of the fact that people can get away with this, that people can be so convincing and so conniving that they can actually steal thousands and thousands of dollars from people and just get away with it. Another Netflix documentary was Catching Killers. I watched season two of that, which is about different cases being profiled and you're following like the detectives and the law enforcement and what they had to do 
to catch these criminals. So like season two featured BTK, the Phoenix serial shooter, and things of that nature. I also watched the Peacock adaptation of One of Us is Lying, which is the adaptation of Karen and McManus's One of Us is Lying book. I really enjoyed this adaptation. I thought they did a wonderful job. Yes, they took it in a different direction than the book, but I just thought the cast was phenomenal. The way that they portrayed the characters, the way that they brought the story to life was fantastic. I do believe that it is getting another season and I'm excited to get into it because like I said, they did a fantastic job I actually think I enjoyed that more than the book just because they were able to bring that drama so well to life on the screen they did phenomenal work on HBO Max I watched a documentary called there's something wrong with Aunt Diane and that one was a little bit hard to watch it's about a woman who has a van full of kids and she's driving they've just like returned from like this camping trip and something unusual happens and she ends up getting into this horrific accident. I think she was driving the wrong way on a road or something like that and it ends up killing her and all the children in the van. And it was very intense to watch and you just have no idea what happened to her. They think that like she might have had like a manic episode. They have no idea what could have possibly gone wrong with this woman because for the most part she was a very loving wife, loving aunt. I guess Diane when she was autopsied they found high levels of alcohol and THC in her system which was weird because when she left everybody that day to take the kids she was not intoxicated. She didn't have any THC in her system and they said it was like not like her to consume these things and so she would have had to consume a lot of alcohol and like in such a short period of time to get her to that level of intoxication but that in combination with I guess THC could have done it. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding what actually happened. Some people like including her husband are some people are just not willing to believe that she was intoxicated while driving these kids. They say that she never would have done that and the reason why it's called there's something wrong with Aunt Diane is because one of the kids was on the phone with his dad saying hey there's something wrong with Aunt like something's going on with her and so it's just it's just heartbreaking. It really is just so so tragic and I watched it and I was that one got me a little bit. It really did. Also on HBO was the Starved Rock Murders. This follows the crimes of Chester Weger who was imprisoned for killing three women at the Starved Rock National Park. He served 60 years before being paroled and it's about a man who was very convinced of his innocence for a long time even though it was his own dad that helped put Chester Weger away and it's also a kind of a conflict also about him coming to terms that Chester might have been guilty so there is some back and forth with that as well. It was interesting enough. It was okay. It wasn't like anything mind-blowing or anything but this is a crime that I had never heard of prior to the documentary and so I enjoyed being able to watch it. Another HBO Max documentary was the case against Adnan Syed. I'm sure a lot of you especially if you've listened to Serial are familiar with Adnan Syed. A lot of people do not believe that he is guilty of the crime of killing his ex-girlfriend Heyman Lee. He has been in prison for I think it's like 22 years at this point for a crime a lot of people don't feel like he committed. There's been a lot of evidence recently released that basically seems to show his innocence but the criminal justice system it's not that easy to let a man go once he's inside so there's been a lot of efforts um, over the past couple of decades to free this man and the case against Adnan Sayed was a really great HBO documentary covering where the case was up until the point of the documentary which was like in 2016-2017. On Hulu, Captive Audience was a really really fascinating story because it's three parts but it actually kind of follows two separate things. It follows the case of a man who was kidnapped when he was seven years old and was actually ended up being like escaping and being returned to his family and so you're following that and kind of the effects of what that was on his family and his children and then in the final episode you're kind of following what happened to that guy's brother and the crimes that he committed. So this poor family has just been really put through it because you know this kid was kidnapped when he was seven years old. Um, eventually he ends up like starting a family and then being tragically killed in a motorcycle accident and then you're following like the ramifications on all of that on his I think it was his older brother and what eventually happened with that older brother and what he ended up doing and it was really really fascinating. Another dramatization I watched on Hulu recently was Candy following Jessica Biel. This is a dramatization of a real life crime following Candy Montgomery who was like this just perfect suburban housewife who one day was at her neighbors and brutally killed her neighbor with an axe and this is basically the dramatization of that crime. Jessica Biel did a fantastic job as Candy. It was really well done. This was another crime that I had never heard of before watching this mini series and it was just really interesting um, especially when you just find out who Candy was and like what ended up happening after the trial so that was another great one as well. On Netflix I also watched watched the adaptation of Pieces of Her which is the adaptation of Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. I disliked Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter immensely. That's probably one of my least favorite Karen Slaughter books. It just bugged me. I really hated the main character Andrea Oliver but luckily I really enjoyed 
the adaptation of it and I really enjoyed the sequel of the novel as well so thankfully I will be continuing in that series but Andrea Oliver was just like the most worthless character of all time in the first book but thankfully they portrayed her as a much stronger character in the adaptation so I really really enjoyed that one. On Hulu I watched Keeper of the Ashes which was actually run by Kristen Chenoweth. She was detailing the Girl Scout murders that happened in the 70s. This is a crime that was close to Kristen Chenoweth's heart because not only did it happen near her but she kind of like knew some of the girls and I think she herself might have actually been meant to be on that trip and so this is just something that has really affected her over the years and she really wants to find out who did it and who was responsible for it. So it was really interesting to see her take on everything that happened. Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey on Netflix was basically the documentary that followed Warren Jeffs and the very fundamentalist uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sect of Mormonism. Warren Jeffs was not a great man at all. This was, this very much feels cult-like, especially if you have watched the documentary, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not really interested in like LDS as a whole, but this was really fascinating to watch. Another really intriguing and complex one was The Girl in the Picture. This follows the death of a young mother and the kidnapping of her son, but these two crimes actually kind of open this big can of worms about who this woman actually was and where she came from. And holy cow, was it intriguing. It seemed like every single episode unraveled a new secret, a new layer to this woman's past that you weren't considering. So it definitely was not straightforward. It really watched like something you would read in a suspense novel. This was really, really fascinating. Another really interesting one on Netflix was The Most Hated Man on the Internet, which follows Hunter Moore. He ran a site called Is Anyone Up, which was basically a pornographic site that was ran based on stolen and hacked photos and kind of like the lives that ruined by showing these very intimate personal photos that people never meant to get out like they sent it to maybe people that they trusted and then he somehow got a hold of them and there was a lot of controversy that went into that that was a really really eye-opening documentary just the things that can happen on the internet oh man Robert and I did watch Only Murders in the Building on Hulu that is the series that stars Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez which is it's such a very campy type story but it was highly highly enjoyable. It follows these three as they all kind of bond over this true crime podcast that they are really a fan of and then something happens in their own building. Somebody is dead. Everybody believes it's a suicide but they don't and so they take it upon themselves to do this investigation and it was just a lot of fun. Season two is already out and we definitely have it on our radar to continue and I think that there's going to be another season as well which I am super excited for. Another shocking and mind-blowing story that I watched was Untold, The Girlfriend That Didn't Exist. This was about the catfishing of a professional football player. Oh man, you just do not believe that things like that can actually happen and they do. And they absolutely do. That was another one that is just, you cannot believe the things that happen on the internet. On the same lines, there was a three or four part documentary called The Web of Make Believe which is really about some of the crazy things that happen on the internet as well. You just never know. You have to be super careful on the internet. You really, really do. You have to be mindful. A lot of things can go down and we're still very much in a time when they're trying to determine how to handle crimes like these. There never used to be laws against certain things like stalking on the internet. Nobody ever knew what that was or what to do with it, you know, and now they're really opening their eyes to all of these terrible, harmful things that can happen on the internet. These documentaries are just, I think, very important. Um, especially since we are all using the internet these days, we can't really get by without it. And so watching these documentaries really makes you mindful of some of this stuff. Another Netflix documentary was one called I Just Killed My Dad. It is about a teenage boy who claims that he killed his father in self-defense. And so this is following his story and what he went through as a kid and what ultimately ended up leading to his father's death. This kid literally called 911 and said, I just killed my dad. And it goes from there because you, you have a very complex situation where this guy knowingly pulled the trigger on his father, but you also have the background of what actually happened to this kid. Throughout it, you're just like, oh yeah, I would have shot him too. So this was another one that was very complicated in terms of you don't know how to feel, you don't know who to root for, you don't really know what should happen. This was a very gray area type of case and I enjoyed watching the documentary of it. Another show that I watched on my own was Devil in Ohio. This is a show that was on Netflix and it stars Emily Deschanel who was the star of Bones. It's about this psychiatrist who takes a really big interest in this girl who comes in and they think that she's from this place called, I think it's Amon Town. And it's basically like this very small, little area that's kind of cultish and so you're following this psychiatrist as she's trying to help this girl trying to uncover what actually happened to this girl and how she gets her and her family involved in this mess. 
Another almost completely unbelievable scenario was Sins of the Mother, which was also on Netflix. This is a true story of a Mormon mother from Ohio. She gets involved with, I don't, I don't know if it's a cult, I don't know what it was, but she gets involved with this man and the things that she does, oh man, you are going to be so angry and so frustrated when you watch this documentary. I could not even believe it. I could not even believe that this happened. She was connected to several deaths, including deaths of members of her own family. And it was just heart-wrenching to see what this did to especially her oldest son, who had to kind of watch as people he loved were killed. And then knowing that his mother was a part of it. Oh man. Whew. This was really one that got me so angry and so aggravated because you just want to shake this woman. You just want to smack her upside the head and be like, what are you doing? You cannot possibly believe the shit that you are saying. It is ridiculous. I also watched the second season of the reboot of Unsolved Mysteries. If you're not familiar, Unsolved Mysteries was a show that was on for many, 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 many years in, I think it started like in the late 80s, possibly early 90s. And it just covered exactly what the title says, Unsolved Mysteries. So these could be like actual crimes and then it could be more unsolved mysteries in terms of things that we can't explain. A lot of times they covered things related to aliens and UFOs or ghosts. And that's still like a running theme in the reboot as well. And so you're following people as they're detailing their own experiences with UFOs, with ghosts, crimes that still haven't been solved, and then loved ones that are desperate to find the answers that they're looking for. I think they're doing a fantastic job with the reboot. Very, very well done. I don't know how long they are going to continue with the reboot, but I enjoy it and I think that this is a great way to bring attention to crimes that a lot of people might not already know about and they could have a piece of the puzzle and they might not know it. And this is a great way to solve some of these crimes. We're finally getting to the tail end of this. The last couple of documentaries that I've watched recently were Killer Sally. Killer Sally is following this female bodybuilder who killed her bodybuilder husband and it's about her story as well as like the criminal investigation that went into it. She claims that she killed him in self-defense, that she was a battered wife. Some people don't necessarily believe that and she was in prison for a very very long time so not only are you following her and her crimes but also the world of bodybuilding which is quite interesting uh the people that are so dedicated to live their lives that way was really really fascinating that was on netflix and then also on netflix was Dahmer conversations with a the killer they did a ted bundy version of this i believe which was interesting and then this is with Dahmer, and so you're actually hearing their recorded conversations with Dahmer and the crimes from his own mouth his own words all right y'all so now i'm just going to quickly run through all of the Christmas movies that I've watched so far up until the month of December. Like I said, the remainder of the month, pretty much all I'm going to be watching are Christmas movies and then finishing some of the shows that I currently have in progress. So the first Christmas movie we watched was The Holiday featuring Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz. A Christmas Story Christmas, which was a very new release that just came out in November. A Christmas Story is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. I have to watch it every single December. And this was a new release that actually follows the kid from that story, all grown up and him with his own family. I thought they did a spectacular job. I love that one so much. If you love A Christmas Story and you're worried about watching this one, don't be. It was exactly what you want from it. It's not trying to replace the original. It's totally doing its own thing, but it still pays really great homage to the original. Die Hard was Christmas movie number three. Four Christmases was Christmas movie number four. Christmas Chronicles 2 was number five. Just Friends was number six. White Christmas was number seven. Elf was number eight. Jingle All the Way was number nine. And Die Hard 2 was number 10. In terms of what I'm currently watching, I'm currently in the middle of The Sinner season four. The Sinner is is a series that was actually created and produced by Jessica Biel. She starred in the first season and it was so phenomenal. That was one of those shows that I just wanted to keep watching because I wanted to know what happened. She's not in the other series, but it still follows the same detective as season one and they're so, so good. And I also currently just started season two of Firefly Lane. Firefly Lane is the adaptation of Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna, which follows the decades long friendship of Tully and Kate, their trials, their tribulations, their loves, their losses, their fights, their makeups, everything that goes along with a life long friendship and the adaptation is very very different from the book I really think that you can consider them two different things but at the core the friendship between Tully and Kate is what's important and the Netflix adaptation shows that really really well so I'm enjoying it and I hope to finish that and season four of The Sinner and that's basically it that's what I plan to wrap up the year with all right y'all so that took a while it took a lot longer than I thought to go through all of those I watched a lot more true crime documentaries than I thought I did this year I don't know what that says about me if you have any other true crime documentaries that you think I would like please leave them down below I'm always looking for more recommendations, especially when I feel like I've exhausted the internet for true crime documentaries. If you have watched anything that I have watched this year, please let me know what your thoughts are. Please let me know some of the best things that you have watched in 2022. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.